So good evening, one and all. Welcome to the live, especially by our uh, renowned pedodontist from Kolkata, Dr. Jayanti Ghosh. And uh, she is specialized in pedodontics. That is uh, in detail about the kids' dentistry. She is specialized. And um, uh, let me uh, wait for a few more uh, people sure, to join sure. us, then we will start. Sure, sure, Dr. Bhavna. How was your day today? Uh, the day was nice today. Like uh, today we uh, like because uh, actually I'm live here. Check to verify room. So sorry for the interruption. So like uh, today was a nice day. Actually tomorrow we are going to my hometown Jamshedpur. So uh -huh. we were doing a little bit of packing and taking few gifts. And okay. uh, like we have decided with few friends like to meet up uh, at our old school that is Kerala Samaja Model School. So, and we have all our teachers there. So, we are, we were like, uh, and yeah, I was uh, writing an article today that is uh, orthodontics and oral mucosal lesions. That is oh. uh, how due to all these retainers and, you know, mm. brackets, uh, there are some lesions which are very much uh, dangerous. Like, mm -hmm. uh, be it, you know, uh, the if you go ahead with these lesions, like uh, your uh, recurrent aphthous ulcers, or mm. uh, your lesions such as uh, uh, this uh, macules, papules, any kind of lesions, they can come and they, if they are recurrent on a frictional mm. basis, they can turn into uh, something very uh, serious if not taken care mm. at an early stage. So I was just writing an article. And Physical injury is one of the reasons uh, for the oral cancer. Muted, huh? The call is muted now from your end. No, now it's muted. I couldn't hear. No, it's muted. Earlier it was nice. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. I was telling them again and again, don't... Mana for a please don't call. No, join Kuru Jitabari, join Kurti of a link here. <laughs> like everybody is so excited. Okay. And I they shared them the links in the morning only. I don't know how, like, I'll again share it now. Yeah, share it, share it. Huh. Okay, okay. So, yes, dog. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, you share share with your friends and relatives so they will also join and okay. see. Okay, so uh, I believe I'm not getting your uh, sound. Uh, hello? Now? Yes, yes. Uh, now can I? I'm, I'm not getting on... the sound this side. I don't know. So... Some, uh, like I'll just now try it without the headphones. Hello? Now is it fine? Uh, you're audible, but the sound is not coming properly, actually. Mm -hmm. Earlier it was I'll just nice. try again. Mm -hmm. Baba, please call. Can I call? Code? A few people have joined. Oh, that's nice. I just can't hear the sounds. I don't know. Now I like, what, what is I'm happening? Can you, can you hear me? Uh, no, I can't hear actually. I'll just try up with the other air dopes. Mm
so hello can doctor yes yes i can hear mm -hmm. you uh, there was few network glitches yes okay so um dr jayanti like uh, first we will start how far the oral hygiene of kids are important what is the importance of a uh, good oral hygiene for kids okay so doctor i wanted to tell like uh, just the way we adults and adolescents like uh, kids actually lie in the age group uh, from 1 years to 16 years of age so just the way we adults do do this hygiene that is brushing twice a day with floss mouthwash etc so similarly we require uh, these children in the age group under 16 years of age or be it under 10 or 5 years for example if the kid is a toddler like mm -hmm. uh, if he or she is 3 years 2 years or if he or she is uh, beneath 1 years we need to require like if the teeth have not yet erupted so the gum pads have to be cleaned properly with a wet cloth so that uh, the area where he is doing uh, like uh, he's maybe he is having breast feeding throughout the night so okay. we require that area to be clean uh, because we know one thing at the night uh, the entire mouth dries up so in those situation when mouth dries up uh, we require certain watery solutions to keep it hydrated and that's why at the night time only if we clean the gum pads with wet cotton then what yes. happens is the caries doesn't spread or the cavity I mean, any kind of uh, infection or any kind of yes yes doctor yes very nice so the gum pads can you just explain in detail so what has to be used and how it has to be done for example uh, from the uh, when the tooth has not erupted yes so the these gum pads actually these are the places these are the points for eruption of desudes or the milk tooth so we have to clean this gum pads either with a cotton cloth a uh, light colored cotton cloth and another thing we have to keep in mind is before we do the weaning off that is ask the like the breast feeding stage is still 2 years or 2.5 years so mm -hmm. before we are just asking the child to uh, like not to do the breast feeding any more we need to clean the area where uh, mm -hmm. the milk is accumulated and uh, the gum pads area have to be completely devoid of any kind of food or debris at night uh, if, even if it is semi solid solid or liquid generally the kids uh, like who are less than 1 years of age or 2 years we are dealing with the semi solid and liquid food so mm -hmm. the area has to be completely cleaned off wiped off with uh, wet cloth and mm -hmm. uh, if uh, like we understand one thing another important phase in the life of a kid is uh, this okay. stage of eruption or uh, the stage of teething uh, this okay. teething indicates that the teeth are like they are starting to appear in the mouth so there is an irritation the children will tell ki mujhe yahan khujli ho raha hai matlab they will not tell we will be uh, able to see it and uh, like make it evident that uh, the the area will be paining so in those cases also apart from cleaning the area with a wet cloth we can give the child a cold cucumber or toast okay. biscuit so that the problems of this irritation itching or maybe this urge to It's bite on much. anything for example this uh, phone or anything bite on any object is been avoided by giving him or her the cold substance like uh, okay. either a cold pacifier or a cold cucumber okay i have seen pacifiers which has a liquid inside and it we can freeze it and we can use it you know that is available yes. in the market advanced so, uh, yes these are some advanced yes. Yes. things now and um, secondly like uh, parents think do we have to bring the children to the dentist in the young age uh so which is the ideal age uh, to have the first dental visit of the kid yes so thank you dr mohana this is a very important question because this requires a lot of awareness there is actually a lack of awareness amongst the uh, parents i must say because all things start from home so if the parents say ki ye to doodh ka dart hai doodh ka dart gir jayega so we don't need to take care about this milk tea but it's not like that starting mm. from 6 months 6 months 
the kid must visit the dentist the first visit of the kid to the dentist must start from 6 months because that is the time for the early uh, first eruption of the lower incisor primary incisor yes. so during that stage if if for example the child is too much on any kind of uh, like uh, there is not proper cleaning up of the gum pads there is not proper speaking up of the child there is some kind of uh, uh, like issues so uh, then we won't be able to see the teeth erupting at the right 6 months of age so that is why the visit to a pediatric dentist actually a pediatric dentistry the word includes ki uh, checking the pedo patients who uh, like where there is late eruption of teeth or there is any kind of specially able child so they are not able to you know the eruption is of again late the, the child cannot bite properly chew properly speak properly so they okay. again apart from this uh, especially able condition uh, the visit to a doctor and everything uh, has to be at the right time that is 6 months yeah 6 months so, so the i uh, in first tooth whenever it comes out of the mouth uh, like uh, it is erupted that is the first visit no even first before they celebrating the first birthday the child has to visit a dentist am i right absolutely yes okay. yes doctor okay. absolutely okay so a uh, few of the people have joined the live so we will welcome them uh, swapna ghosh uh, she has put a hi <laughs> hi swapna hi uh, welcome to the live i hope uh, this is uh, a cherishing moment for you <laughs> and the yes. second one this mc triple z life stories have put a question hello doctor my child oral cavity has a blue spot when we consult a doctor they said that is the oral nevi but it is increased in size and itching also there is there any other pro- any problem so adding to the question i would like to ask that person what is the age of the patient uh, mm-hmm. what is the age of the child so that doctor will have a, a clearer answer to your question so just give an outline so that as uh, yes, he or yes, she can yeah yes yes so thank you dr mohan and thank you uh, like um, uh, mc's life stories like i'm using the the keyword that is there for the person who has texted me so six yeah the patient is 6 years old and he or she is having a blue spot so uh, the doctor i'm sure the doctor to whom you had taken your child he or she must be a consultant physician or maybe some kind of surgeon so he or she has told you that is uh, like this uh, blue spot is uh, anevi but uh, before making a final diagnosis i will clearly suggest that this blue spot nevi or whether it is a singular nevus whether it is having any associated itching and i would like to ask you sir that uh, since how long this blue spot was seen and does this blue spot increase in size and uh, yeah but it is increased in size it is written which and uh, is is also, which part of uh, which part of the oral cavity has that uh, yes that it, it is there in the cheeks inside the buccal mucosa or on the tongue beneath the tongue or in the vestibule so we need to know the location where this uh, blue spot is visible in the oral cavity because there are like a uh, generalized version you can have the tongue or maybe uh, just the vestibule part behind the your gingiva oral mucosa cheek. okay cheek this in the cheek okay so i will suggest doctor uh, i will suggest uh, mr ncz that uh, if this nevus is there in the cheeks and you need to first go to a pediatric uh, yeah buccal mucosa absolutely so first you need to go to a pediatric dentist like or uh, if you can send me a picture via dr mohana's profile also because dr mohana herself is a periodontist so if you can send the picture in dr mohana's number because dr mohana will be uh, attaching the number of herself as well as mine so i will be taking up the pictures of the nevus depending on this clinical presentation so first and foremost i will tell you nothing to worry we need always we need to reassure a patient uh, especially if he or she is a kid and especially the parents that even if the size is increasing if, if it is itching 
the most priority thing which we will take into consideration is maintenance of oral hygiene near that nevus area also the more we keep it uh, unhygienic dirty then the itching problem can persist for long so you have to maintain this oral prophylaxis by going to a pediatric dentist asking and then the pediatric dentist can go ahead with a histopathological examination whether it is a benign lesion or it is any kind of other traumatic lesion whether uh, and another histology i would like to ask you that uh, whether the lesion uh, occurred after any trauma whether the child has undergone any uh, fall down in a school i'm sure 6 years old child is a ukg upper kg child so whether he or she has undergone any fall while playing any sports so all this history will be taken into consideration sir uh, we will be attaching the number of dr mohana she will be uh, just uh, explaining the case history to me and then i can help you out sir thank you so much okay. but i will say nothing to worry uh, you must uh, like reassure yourself as well as the child that uh, if the child is in an asking mode that what is friend is thinking or is fear uh, that whether it is something dangerous or not so it's nothing to be worried of these lesions can easily be uh, cured of medicines first we try medicines either by normal antibiotics prophylaxis any kind of corticosteroids and if they don't get treated by these uh, treatment we go ahead with the laser uh, curatomy surgical laser laser surgery which is a bloodless non invasive and a very cost effective surgery so nothing to worry sir we uh, surely can go ahead with a good management plan okay so for that question i hope uh, uh, dr jayanti has answered in a very uh, brief a uh, very detailed manner also and um, uh, the final diagnosis has to be done by a biopsy no so if needed the biopsy has to be taken and uh, the final diagnosis that is like we can guess this may be this or that but to say the lesion is this is the problem we have to take a small portion of that uh, uh, for the specimen yeah. and then we have to send it to the lab and the lab person will give a report by seeing the report we can treat very definitely the case so thank you life story is am triple z thank you western thank you arya eklavia also uh, i think he is my uh, yeah he is my uh, brother uh, from delhi oh, yeah. and he is within proud of you thank you so much bhai thank you for joining arya so nice thank so you. nice of you yes we are proud of dr jayanti <laughs> very thank nice you. so uh, let's want to one more question like yeah. um the parents role in uh, taking care of the kids oral health yes so starting from the early age as i said wiping the gum pads with a wet cloth the uh, when the teeth has erupted in the oral cavity after 6 months 1 year what the, the parents can do is there are uh, brushes ranging for each years like if it is 7 months 7 years 6 months 7 months 8 months 1 year 1 and 1/2 years so accordingly a soft toothbrush with small amount of tooth toothpaste like kido dent or cheerio any uh, like the toothpaste has to be in the size of a rice grain not in a bigger size okay. like t shape because t shape is is for adults so rice grain uh, sized uh, toothpaste has to be given and twice either uh, if the child is 7 month uh, of age then this uh, brushing can be like accompanied by the mother or maybe by the fingers we can do it because still the patient child is in a state where he can't do it with proper amount of consciousness so it can be carried about by the mother only uh, we have toothpaste and mouthwash after 1 year or 1.5 years 2 years we have very good mouthwashes like floritop mouthwash and uh, colgate mouthwash which helps to maintain uh, like keep out the germs out of the mouth and the flossing can be done after 5 uh, to 6 years 3 years that is if flossing is done the one of the most important advantage of flossing is the interdental area or the area between two tooth uh, when germs accumulate and they create this proximal caries or the caries in between two tooth they get cleared off by using this floss or interdental brush so again this can be done another very good uh, usage these days is uh, 
whenever the children like uh, one thing i've noticed in instagram as well that is these days uh, one of my very uh, favorite influencer i will say uh, uh, biological mom she is she always tells her kids the entire procedure for uh, maintaining oral hygiene that is uh, brushing she's 3 year old toddler so brushing rinsing flossing mouthwash so she always tells this five procedures in a line that is brushing flossing rinsing mouthwash so if you do this properly starting from 3 years to 3 uh, years 4 years 5 years these all uh, lesser than 3 years you can just go ahead with like if the child is not yet able to take the brush and properly hold it in the back side front side then mothers can accompany the child and another thing is these dinosaur shaped brush brushes are also there from icp or any brand they uh, really help the child a lot to brush because they get inspired by this badi model dinosaur model as well yeah thank you so much okay. yes that's nice so the brush are available according to the age of the child that is what uh, i think you meant and uh, secondly i would like to add upon Uh, to prevent the formation of the new cavity there is a technique called brush spit do not rinse so whenever we do not rinse so after brushing spit the excess paste but do not rinse in that manner the fluoride will be coating the tooth surfaces and the new cavity will not form so yes, this sorry. point i just wanted to highlight Absolutely. because most people do brush and rinse it and spit so by rinsing you are removing the fluoride content right. which has been deposited by the uh, paste so uh, and also a uh, paste which is especially for the kid has a low fluoride content right so there will be less uh, tendency for the toxicity to happen in the that's why we ask them to keep very little uh, Uh, amount of uh, toothpaste over the brush and uh, also the technique uh, can you highlight doctor or yes, in doctor. what way the uh, uh, children has to be guided or the mother has to do for their kid how yes. uh, how we can sure. do the toothbrush sure sure yes doctor very important point laid down by you is uh, the fluoride amount it should be very less less than 1 uh, ppm uh, as it is said uh, Uh, parts per million so as to avoid this uh, fluoride toxicity that is why in children this uh, fluoride should be as less as possible and yes uh, keeping the spit in the mouth without rinsing helps us in formation of this reparative or secondary dentine which protects the teeth much more against this dental caries not only the pits and fissures but also on the cusp and the incisal edges very nicely explained dr mohan and i'm really glad i just missed out on this point and oh, as no, no. Brushing, uh, very nice so for example brushing you are the host yeah. i am the guest i will be in a very uh, tense <laughs> mode so i do forget so i just uh, i am only sitting so i don't <laughs> lot of points no, no, i really on. get lot of inspirations from you dr mohan you always uh, release lot of knowledge and we are very grateful so brushing oh, i like yeah. to tell the technique is uh, you can use a bars method circular uh, like generally what do the adults do or the children also do they start rubbing the brush like this this they just rub it in a horizontal manner but this has not to be done as you mentioned in the previous line that uh, we should make sure that the dentine enamel should not be entirely rubbed off as it can create lot of hypersensitivity too much of sensitivity so in order to uh, like make sure that the dentinal tubules are not exposed we need to brush at 45 degree angulations like in a rounding off motion or in angulations like uh, if we keep the brush a, a bit uh, away from the mouth and like uh, make sure that uh, we are not you know rubbing off the entire dentine but just removing the particles like the dirt or the stains okay. intrinsic extrinsic stain and making sure that they are at a 45 degree angulation and whenever we are doing it in the upper side from uh, like lower to upper portion and in the lower uh, lower teeth mandibular teeth it's from lower to uh, down or we can do a, a round a round circle circular motion or it can be uh, vertical also vertically it is helpful but the best method is this uh, in a circular motion where uh, from the sulcus we will take out the germs take out the impurities outside and uh, in the lower side from outside to a poor like 
from the upper portion to uh, down. So we will make okay. sure that uh, the area is free of any kind of dirt, impurities, stains, and this will help. Yes, doctor. So, uh, Dr. Jayanti, I'm just requesting you to put a video on Fonts Technic, F-O-N-E-S, Fonts yes. Technic, so that other people can also uh, Google it uh, in your uh, YouTube sure. page. And uh, sure. Uh, sure. if you can sure. send it across to me, I will also Thank put it so posted much. in my... <laughs> so, <laughs> Fonts Technic, you can Google it, F-O-N-E-S. Fonts Technic is an ideal technique for the children who are having the less uh, dexterity to do with an advanced technique. But uh, this technique is more than enough for the children under six. But after six, there are other techniques called BAS technique and modified BAS technique. B-A-S-S, you can search in the Google, the public who are seeing. So Fonts technique for kids and if they are uh, growing uh, grown grown up children, then you can go ahead and do BAS technique. B-A-S-S. Okay. So Absolutely that's nice. Doctor. And um, so, is there any uh, uh, primary teeth? Uh, can you say like uh, for the awareness of the public? When does it start and when does it end? Uh, and uh, is there uh, how many teeth? Primary teeth are there? Yes. So yes, kindly yes. highlight on that. Doctor. Sure, sure. So, uh, if we take into a consideration the primary teeth, they are like ten teeth. Uh, like 10 in the maxillary arch and 10 in the mandibular arch. So these primary teeth, they uh, start erupting by uh, like in lower incisors start erupting by six months and nearly all the eruption and shedding off of, they uh, get completed by, uh, I will say uh, four to five, uh, like, um, yeah, six, four, four to five, yeah, two and five, half. yeah uh, two, two and a half, yes, yes, two and a half years of age. So after that, like, uh, we will uh, see that there will be, uh, like, entire permanent teeth available. And, uh, with, uh, like, but in certain cases, if uh, the teeth may not fall off at this right two and a half or three years of age, they take a bit of time, like five years, six years. If there is too much of rampant caries, nursing bottle caries uh, in the early, like, early childhood period, like, from six months to two and a half, that is still the time period we are doing the vein off or the breastfeeding is uh, occurring. And after that, so we go ahead with a semi-solid or solid food uh, in the mouth. So after that, the entire like dentition gets completed off. So I will suggest that uh, during that time uh, and the 10, 10 primary teeth which are there in the mouth, the parents do feel that this desudis teeth which is there, uh, we should not go and give so much of amount to the dentist like uh, just for filling, uh, maybe uh, at an age of one year, two years or uh, three years, if uh, the cavity has developed and uh, the parents will say that the teeth will shed off by five years or maybe six years if we properly see it into the uh, like uh, chronological dentition period. Okay. So uh, if uh, then why to go ahead with uh, sharing, spending so much of money on the child. But the fact is, uh, primary dentition is uh, very important. If the uh, desidus teeth don't fall off properly, then the permanent teeth will not come at the right place. And this 10 teeth need to be fallen off at the right time. Otherwise, uh, they will be crowded, crowding, there will be misalignment. There, there can be a lot of uh, like speech difficulties as well. Okay, so they are totally 20 milk teeth. Yes, so yes. that is uh, 20 milk teeth and 32 permanent teeth together. Yes, it's yes. 52 uh, yes. teeth. That is the reason yes. I uh, named the clinic as 52 yes. plus yes. dental yes. clinic. And uh, really nice apart from that, the name. Yeah. <laughs> name, yeah. most of the people just walk inside the clinic to know the meaning of the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like uh, two and a half years, uh, the whole 20 teeth will be there. If you have a kid or uh, children in your home, just look into their mouth. They have 10 teeth on the upper arch and the 10 teeth on the lower arch together. 20 teeth is there. And most of the people start brushing once all the teeth has come inside the mouth. That should not be done. Whenever the first tooth comes into the oral cavity, as Dr. Jayanti highlighted, you have to take a smaller amount of paste equivalent to the raw rice size and brush in the circular motion and spit, do not rinse. So there was one more question you know, which has been asked by uh, Mr. Arya, 
Uh, so not rinsing is applicable to the kids and elders also. Yes, yes, it is always advisable for everyone because the fluoride is acting just like a helmet. Okay, so the helmet has to be worn when you walk across the road. So in the similar manner, if the fluoride is coating the tooth surface, whether it is a kid's teeth or the adult teeth, it will prevent. It will have a barrier effect against the bacteria, so that um, uh, the new cavity will not form. Uh, but you yeah. should make sure that the oral cavity is uh, in good health because you have a lot of deposits, you have a lot of tartar, and you are just uh, not uh, rinsing, then it will be a problem. Before even starting this, you go ahead to a dentist and check all the things are up to uh, mark, up to the mark. The oral health is very excellent. Then you can follow this technique. Excellent. And the uh, second thing is, uh, can you highlight on uh, uh, the fluoride varnish, doctor? Fluoride varnish and how many frequency they has to be done? It has to be done. Yes. So uh, fluoride varnishes uh, during our college days, like uh, whenever a five-year kid or a six-year or maybe an eight-year kid used to come to our department, the first, mm -hmm. for example, if he used to come uh, for any kind of restoration. So there are three agents uh, which are very uh, like if he has come for a normal pit and pressure, we need to give a steel okay. to the patient or a small class one cavity as per uh, angles classification in the molar. So uh, for that, three agents are very important. That is uh, liner, bases and varnishes. So these fluoride okay. varnishes, there is a very good uh, like uh, I will say fluoritox only. There is a fluoritox varnish, orange colored varnish. Whenever okay. you put this varnish over by play, like the first, though you have to make a cavity. If there is a uh, exposure or maybe small amount of pulp, um, small amount of dentine is affected with little bit of caries, you first have to clean the area uh, with a spoon excavator and make sure all the debris, leather debris, is removed. And uh, then at the area, you can put a small lining of a cavity varnish. This cavity varnish over the layer of dentine will prevent any kind of dentine hypersensitivity. Like okay. if uh, the child patient had not visited to the dentist at an early point, like uh, and the caries would go down, down, down. From the deciduous poor teeth, dentine, it would have gone to the pulp uh, roof, pulp chamber and further to the roots. And we don't want the caries to go from the deciduous root to the deciduous roots, from the crown to the roots. Because if it goes to the roots, it will affect the permanent teeth uh, eruption. And there will be a late shedding off or a uh, this pre-shedding mobility will be affected uh, due to this uh, increased amount of caries accumulation. So uh, applying of this varnish will help me properly to save the tooth from any kind of hypersensitivity it adequate amount of fluoride deposition and this fluoride deposition will help in proper CPP ACP formation that is kesen phosphopeptide amorphous calcium phosphate that is the uh, agent required for remineralization dentinal remineralization as doctor you have all uh, like highlighted it many times this remineralization is a very important thing and uh, even the other techniques employed in the villages, the ten, uh, camps, that is atraumatic restorative technique. These uh, varnishes after the spoon excavation is done without any usage of drills, if we can just put this uh, varnish, they can purely help to reduce the caries at the early incipient lesion, the white stage. If they can stop it at the early stage, then it cannot go to the roots and further not create a widespread decay. Very good question, doctor, and thank you. Uh, like, I'm really happy that uh, uh, that is you from uh, South India, and even uh, like this is a big thing that uh, you are always organizing shows, which can really help create awareness, uh, as there is a lack of awareness for children's too, and they get either they get shed off without any cause, or they are not adapting in time. Too much of malocclusion, speech mm. issues, developmental issues. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So uh, the primary teeth are guiding the permanent teeth to come to a proper position. Am I right? Yeah. Absolutely. So the importance is uh, uh, whenever the primary teeth is not there for uh, a particular uh, desired amount of time, 
then the permanent teeth is going to lose their pathway and uh, going to erupt in a haphazard manner. So uh, it is always advisable to uh, prevent the caries formation. If the caries has happened also, there are treatment available to uh, have the uh, tooth to come back to the normal architecture. So the second thing is, um, so whenever, what are the different types of filling that can be done? Doctor, like uh, starting from enamel caries, dentin caries, and if it's touching the pulp, what are the different types of uh, treatment which is available? And also uh, highlight on how we will be managing. Some people will say like, uh, my children is not cooperating to have a, a, a small, uh, you know, so how can we do the treatment inside the oral cavity? So when yes. I usually say the handling the children has a lot of psychology in it, and uh, the, the pediatric dentist have a huge experience and uh, uh, the knowledge about it. So they will implicate and in a, such a manner, the kid will cooperate for the treatment throughout the procedure. So kindly highlight on that. Sure, sure, doctor. So uh, the main important thing for this uh, like uncooperative child to make him uh, get converted from a totally uncooperative child to a cooperative one, we do a lot of techniques like behavior management, either by reinforcement, telling uh, the patient, if you do this treatment properly, I will gift you this or your parents will give them this. Another thing we can do is show them that uh, their sibling is undergoing the treatment properly or they are uh, standing there without any disturbance, without any irritation. So you should also behave in that kind of way. And uh, because he is a smart kid, so you should also, I mean, you show them that model, model management is done, modeling. Behavior management through modeling, through reinforcers, that is gifts. Next, uh, gifts is, we are uh, giving small gifts like a small tat sticker or maybe a small model. We get this in the shop or Amazon. So these are not an issue. And another thing is, we do this, uh, we ask the patient, uh, we show each and every steps, like whatever we are doing, uh, using of the suction or using of the aerator. Whenever we explain each and every step, what happens is the patient tells, show, do. Whatever you are telling, you have to show it and then you have to do. Another is, another technique which you can do is white noise or noise suppression. You can always have in a pediatric dental operatory, in our college days also it was seen, and very nicely in a hospital, uh, an audiovisual aid, if maybe if it is not a very good private hospital, even if it is a government place, you can always have some amount of music being played in the background. So small amount of cartoon noise, music, or even if you can keep, uh, if, uh, if there is a TV available, small amount of, if it is placed in front of the child's eyes in the dental chair, then the child can focus on that and you can go ahead. Another thing is lap to lap management. Like we can keep the child's head on our lap and his body on his mother's lap. Because when we show him, see, we are not uh, removing your mother from the operatory. You try to understand this. And then uh, you, when the patient is sobbing, you can keep uh, like the hands over his chest and tell him, like asking him. First, you can ask his permission. Can I put, because you're sobbing, you're very nervous. I just want to make sure that you are not that scared. That is why I will be putting my hands on your chest to make sure you're relaxed. And relax, calm down slowly. And if you uh, can undergo this treatment without crying, without running over here and there, uh, then we, what we will do is we can uh, show you this channel. We can gift you this. Another thing is uh, uh, we can wrap. We can put this uh, like uh, wrap wrap over the uh, patient's body some amount of uh, like uh, this is wrapping up is not done these days. But in our college days, we had seen it can be done like either by a blanket or by some amount of tight agent like tight amount of, uh, so that even we will make sure that he or she is able to breathe well, but this wrapping up will uh, prevent him uh, to move too much, use his hands, legs, stop from being too much exacerbated. Uh, even though we have assistance hand, our two hand, and two hands of another uh, suction, like six hands dentistry. So, but okay. still taking care of the child, 
and always another thing is whenever the child is too much uncooperative the dental operatory of a pediatric dentist should be made child friendly it should be too much uh, it should have some amount of cartoon uh, cartoons play uh, your toys and uh, very good vibrancy should be there uh, even the apron of the uh, female dentist or maybe the male periodontist should be uh, either it can be colorful or it can be white i suggest white apron is a very peaceful sign that will suggest that yes unlike the green surgical gown or you know the pink uh, like yeah pink is also good but white apron is a very clear cut apron which suggests that yeah uh, whatever i am doing i am telling you i am showing you and e- even after that if we still uh, we can do another technique is we uh, can take the big injections and show him that i can give you this if you don't behave properly this is a horses injection i had seen this mm-hmm. technique done by my hod ma'am during my college days oh, and uh, like uh, i can give you this new horse yeah and then he used to be like okay last fine <laughs> last option like the last option not the okay. first one and then i believe you asked mm-hmm. me the next part of the question was first is to cooperate uh, like uh, what you do we do how to treat a uh, modeling reinforcement uh, white noise suppression and the next part of the question was uh, i believe you asked about the types of filling agents restorative agents yes. yeah so the different types of agents are light cure composites are very good uh, now uh, you also have these blue composites the colored uh, like uh, blue composites the uh, like fills uh, fillers where uh, the amount of fillers are less but this blue composites or the starred composites starry composites are very good like uh, they shine much more and they have more or less the same property as that of composites they set at the same time they are the same color as that of tooth but uh, one of the biggest advantages they don't get micro leached by saliva a lot they are a bit uh, expensive because sali- even if you are not using a rubber dam proper suction or too much of cotton rolls because we know they are children they will vomit they will spit they will do lot of tantrums so if we want to prevent them we can use composites starry composites we can use gic sandwich technique can be done uh, above gic you can put composite and uh, the gic can cover the dent- uh, dentine and uh, above the dentine this composite will act as an aesthetic agent and also as it has got a lot of strength i have seen uh, this with this two uh, composites act as a very good uh, strengthening agent and they don't easily get worn off or broken off so they are very good okay they are restorative material which is uh, being used for the topmost layer when the cavity is little less these are the options when the cavity is little deep and yeah. how it can be needed so uh, if uh, the cavity is a bit deeper and the patient is for example to uh, maybe a bit higher in age if i go 11 years 12 years we can also use you know uh, i will say uh, even if it is a bit uh, toxic or even if it is a bit but one agent very nicely proved as per the books is uh, muthu and sip kumar have also said that is uh, amalgams silver amalgams they are very good they are cost effective not only for the dentist but also for the patients and uh, they really help in uh, these uh, uh, what uh, yeah silver amalgams they are retained for a longer period of time they don't undergo dislodgement they can be easily mulled off they can be easily mixed or mulled off uh, from this uh, like triturated mix into the patient's mouth or a pre triturated mix uh, this capsule can be given uh, or with an amalgamator uh, howsoever you do it's a very easy technique with the help of a assistant uh, if we, if we explain him or her we can easily put that in patient's mouth and mm-hmm. uh, obviously uh, there is this uh, similar metal galvanism doesn't happen because uh, with amalgam we obviously don't give any gold or any kind of other uh, metals uh, specifically in a child even if we give in adults but in child we take extra care to make sure that they are very uh, in a peaceful state they are happy and they do feel satisfied that is the most important thing okay that's nice 
doctor can you highlight like lot of uh, children are having uh, some habits like thumb sucking mouth breathing so can you highlight how we can prevent it and what are the treatment options for this yes so doctor for uh, like thumb sucking uh, the etiology which has been seen is uh, there are many etiologies either it can be either due to uh, like one of the parents is there uh, two parents are not there another can be due to any kind of uh, like uh, he or she is too much nervous about something he is not ex- about to explain that properly or he or she is in a having siblings with not much age gap in between so we are not able to give that amount of uh, attention to the elder child so in that case this thumb sucking which is there it can be treated either by wrapping up of a cloth in the thumb so that the thumb sucking is prevented by adding any uh, you know uh, like uh, in the ch- like in our childhood also our uh, grandmother grandfather used to tell ki you can give lot of red flakes chili flakes in your mm-hmm. fingers so that you don't do that sucking another is uh, another is thumb crib can be given uh, so that uh, this myofunctional appliances are very good thumb crib uh, which can prevent this uh, thumb like uh, they have a thumb space sucking. for this ha huh, and they will prevent this thumb sucking at an early stage and they do have a space for the thumb to be kept as well and uh, all the other malocclusion or the jaw jaw malformations can be prevented so and other uh, this uh, habits which are there like tongue thrusting is there in order to uh, prevent uh, tongue thrusting also you have uh, various appliances uh, a holly adams class or holly appliances along with a retainer can be given lingual uh, lingual as well as a front side retainer is also placed okay. so uh, accordingly depending on the problem if there is a uh, lip biting issue uh, you first and foremost is empathy reassuring with the patient understanding the patient trying to remove the etiology whichever is the etiology and then going on to the surgical or the appliance uh, using of the appliances mode of treatment first and foremost this empathy reassurance stabilization is very important because okay. uh, the way we adults can explain ourselves the children are like less expressive especially if they are specially able like autism cerebral palsy or okay. any kind of yeah special disorders so the habits are uh, really we have to find out the root cause and the root cause has to be addressed and also there are lots of treatment to stop this habit so that it doesn't have the future consequences of this habit like jaw malformation the jaw may go uh, bigger or smaller so to prevent this this habit has to be addressed in a earlier stage by visiting a pediatric dentist and also uh, just to highlight on whenever the children are falling they are very active they move here and there they tend to fall down so whenever they fall down the tooth sometimes no it just fractures or sometimes yes. the tooth wholly comes out the yes. uh, yes. and uh, what are the step the parents has to take whenever the tooth has come out fully kindly yes. uh, yes. do some light on it so that yes. the parents will have a awareness on it yes doctor so the thing which you told that is tooth entirely tooth is coming out due to any falling off trauma or playing any sports the procedure uh, the process is avulsion so in order to uh, prevent uh, like uh, taking care uh, conservative management of this avulsion will be there are various kinds of medias in which you can place this avulsed tooth first i will come to avulsion and then i'll go on to the other ls fractures that is small amount of fracture a bit bigger fracture than that avulsed tooth can be directly placed into your saliva saliva is the best media for uh, preserving the avulsed tooth all the periodontal ligament fibers so that when you place the tooth back to the socket within 24 hours or within 48 hours the vitality of the tooth is not lost and the cells the pdl cells are still viable so whenever uh, you put it in the uh, either saliva can be used as a medium to save this avulsed tooth or saline milk coconut water propolis is an agent another H- hbss is there hangs balance salt solution gatorade these are various solutions where you can the store the tooth so that the viability is preserved either within 12 hours if 
uh, there is no nearby hospital within 12 hours otherwise uh, visiting the dentist as soon as possible and getting the aval tooth splinted or uh, by using a composite or by uh, removing the extra amount of dirt debris conservatively uh, cleaning the area not too much cleaning so that the pdl viability can be preserved but the dirt is removed to an early extent okay. and then putting it back into the tooth socket uh, and going ahead with a root canal treatment or if it is a splinting procedure you can also splint it via this composite that is uh, this etch uh, and wrap the tooth in the tissue paper and cloth and come so that should not be done that's what the doctor uh, jayanti yes. is highlighting uh, the tooth which has come out has to be put it in a milk chilled milk or coconut water or in the saliva of the child itself and brought it to the dentist as soon as possible at least 30 minutes within the trauma period that is the recent uh, researchers are saying if they reach to you within 30 minutes the survival of the same tooth is more okay absolutely so uh, which is the ideal age you do doctor for the primary teeth we don't do right for the permanent teeth we do the uh, uh, reinsertion in partition uh for the, you're telling it for uh, like uh, splinting or ab- uh, like avulsion no avulsion. management of avulsion we usually say for the primary milk teeth we don't do and for the permanent teeth we do yes uh, the age is uh, as far as my uh, knowledge goes i believe the age is uh, uh, as i remember i may be wrong uh, i feel yes. it is 11 uh, um, okay i may be wrong 11 yeah. years Okay. Okay. So, we'll kindly highlight on nursing bottle caries, and all the teeth are black. Some people come, no? All the yeah. teeth in the upper teeth are uh, cavitated, blackish, and uh, they are only concerned when it is affecting their aesthetics. Still, that they will not come. So, yes. how far we can prevent, and what is that? It's not affecting the lower teeth. It's only affecting the upper teeth. Can you throw some light yes. on? Uh, yes. so uh, like generally what happens is the lower teeth is in contact with the tongue so the tongue uh, stays hydrated in contact with the buccal mucosa the, the tongue is always uh, containing uh, like the saliva but uh, at night what happens is even in adults the palate dries up a lot if the patient if the adult or the child is a mouth uh, mouth breather if he is breathing from the mouth the a uh, pallet portion i can uh, tell it from my experience only because uh, i was also a mouth breather so uh, what happens is the pallet dries up and whenever this happens uh, your and at night when uh, the child slept with the bottle that is to for example the child is a uh, two po- uh, above 2.5 years 3 years or a 4 years old child the child what he did was that is he slept with a uh, bottle uh, entire night so in the morning what he will see is slowly it is uh, not over a day he will develop this black spots but for example he did this continuously for 7 days or maybe 8 days and his uh, the area is not cleaned even in the morning uh, after the dinner or maybe so in those cases these ramp, uh, nursing bottle caries do does develop that is nursing bottle caries is due to uh, this uh, usage of this bottle milk sugar solid this uh, solids which is containing your um, saccharides uh, the sweeteners and due to this there is a uh, like uh, accumulation of streptococcus streptococcus bacteria okay. which uh, creates this triad or this uh, phenomenon for dental caries and releases acids as well in the mouth so this acids uh, because acids they generally generate in the absence of saliva this acids the carbohydrate breaking down in the presence of enzyme like lysozyme and uh, thereby causing drying up of the mouth should be prevented by cleaning up of the gum pa- and the, uh, what happens is the mothers come at the last stage where the entire teeth is black for a 3 year old child and they want the treatment to be done even if they use an all ceramic all jacket crown for the patient but wearing uh, uh, making sure that the mother is aware because Uh, for every mother it's not possible to afford such an expensive treatment those jacket crowns or maybe ceramic crowns all ceramic crowns are very expensive so at that point of time what we can do is uh, we can start 
uh, cleaning the uh, cavity we can start using fit and finish sealants we can start applying composites and as much as we can make the tooth aesthetic but in order to create an awareness among the mother we have to tell that please don't give the bottle throughout the night you please uh, before sleeping make sure that the child is not sleeping with the bottle at least for 6 uh, to 7 hours uh, and you make sure that before 10 or before 11 the bottle is out of the child's mouth when the child is hungry he or she is uh, maybe uh, in the middle of the night at that point of time you can give him the powdered milk the uh, pacifier the uh, bottle and after that you just immediately wipe up the area clean the area with a wet cotton wet gauze cotton gauze and uh, make sure that the area is entirely clean if they maintain this hygiene just then and there during uh, feeding or uh, uh, not keeping the bottle entire night for a long period of time of 7 days 10 days then that will not develop into a nursing bottle series so the last feed has to be devoid of uh, sugar it can be a water no instead of uh, sugary uh, milk uh, or milk with, uh, water can be replaced as a last feed so the second thing is uh, is there any um, so lot of uh, children uh, have a smaller upper jaw the bigger lower jaw smaller lower jaw bigger upper jaw so whether it has to be treated in a earlier stage or we can wait till the adult kindly highlight Yes, so there is one important saying by one of my idols. I will say, Dr. Jeeva Ratan Sir, who is a pediatrician. I will say, Sir always told me during my exams also uh, that is treat the muscles when young. So we have to treat as soon as early as possible. Whenever we start seeing the deformity in the child, even if there are proclined incisors or if the we want the jaw, the lower jaw to be a bit uh, forward. we want the like jaw to be a bit beautiful the lower jaw be the upper jaw to be a bit backward so anything we wish has to be done as soon either by 7 years 6 years or even by 8 years of age we can use any kind of retainers holly's retainer or lingual retainer and if the arch is small also we have these arch expanders which can increase the arch and uh, help the uh, like Uh, child accumulate a lot of space in his mouth and these uh, by uh, creating a bigger arch the problems uh, can be sorted out the malocclusion malocclusion the aesthetics and this will also boost up the confidence of the child patient if we uh, you know uh, like treat the muscles as young as possible that is as early and that is the main awareness the main topic discussed by uh, recently many in many of the webinars that is uh, treating all the muscles the muscles of max- mastication where wherever whenever they are in- involved be the vaccinator mylohyoid or uh, your uh, zygomatic uh, like uh, any kind of muscles like they should be treated as early as possible and uh, making sure that at the uh, late, like whenever the child has reached uh, the marrying stage or anything they should not be a problem at that point so that that is a major thing so we have to make use of the growth spurt uh, okay. for the growth to be modified no so modification growth modification can be done in the young age I if you that. miss this period then the surgery would be the option in the adult age so address the jaw deformity in the earlier age so that the surgery can be avoided in the adult phase of life so doctor very very nice detailed explanation to all the questions Uh, which the awareness of uh, public is very less so in that area you have highlighted lots of lots of uh, awareness to the public thank you so much dr jayanti so kind of you to accept my invitation yesterday and come to a live today <laughs> thank you thank you so much so kind of you thank you dr mohana thank you everyone for watching us i'm really thankful to you as well and i'm sure uh, like i even uh, have to look into the video um, like our book uh, uh, to many topics and these webinar sessions do help us in brushing our knowledge as well and we are learning every day so learning is a boon and thanks to you dr mohana for sharing uh, so knowledgeable thing um, so knowledgeable uh webinars and so knowledgeable like i will say i watch your videos every day and i found find this 
very helpful not only in my regular life or anyone i really suggest uh, anyone to really subscribe you and i myself i have also subscribed you for your uh, therapy updates thank you doctor and a very good night thank please take care thank you thank, thank you everyone, everyone for joining this live have a great day and good night have a great good night. thank good you night.